want to talk to you about some of the tools over the years that I've learned that have helped me get a little bit more organized, stay more focused, help me plan my week out. So my first tip is use a planner. I know a lot of people probably use a planner. People probably have their favorites. This is the one that I use. It's called the Full Focus Planner. Very beautiful. It's like getting a Christmas present when you open your new planner for the quarter. And the reason I really like this one, the Full Focus Planner has a whole system around it. There's some books that uh, Michael Hyatt has written. He's the one that does the planner. And you start with planning your life and kind of what is it that you want out of life? What are your goals? Not just work, but you know, financially, where do you want to be? Spiritually, where do you want to be? Physically, you know, health wise. And so planning that out really helps you then break it down into, well, in the next five years, I want to do this. So if you break it down in the next five years, what do you want to get done this year? You know, so the beginning of the year, you write down your annual plan. What are my goals for this year? And then break that down into quarters. So this, these are the goals I want to accomplish. Q1, this is what I want Q2, so on and so on. At the beginning of the planner, you write down what are your goals for that quarter, and then you can break those down into your weekly plan. So it's very nice to know that every week what your daily big three um, obstacles or things that you want to accomplish are really tied back to what you want to get out of life. So I think it helps you get focused on what's important and blur out the noise in your life of maybe what's not so important. My second habit is to plan your week on a Sunday. Um, I use Sunday, I guess it, doesn't, it could be any day, but the full focus planner kind of focuses on Sunday as when you're gonna plan your week. So on Sunday afternoons or evenings, I pull out my planner, I look through my calendar on my phone and see what do I have coming up? And it helps me not just go through the week and then, oh, I forgot tonight I've got spin class and I didn't bring any gym clothes to work. I write down what's going on, what are my goals for that week. And when it comes Monday morning, I'm not worried about the week. I know what to expect. I've got it all written out. Very, very helpful for me to avoid the Sunday scaries, as they call them. Also adding to your to-do list. Okay, I, oh shoot, I got that birthday party on Saturday night. Tuesday night after work, I need to go to the mall and get a present. Um, if a mall is still a thing. So habit number three is block one or two work days for backstage activities. So, you know, if you're a salesperson, there's on stage where you're pre presenting proposals to people and you've got to be on stage. Plan some days that are backstage where you're not in front of your audience, you're not actually doing your role, you're just able to plan or work on a project that you don't, you, you're not gonna get interrupted, you can really focus on. Before, I, my schedule would be kind of just sporadic, whatever, if I had a soft slot, let's put it there. But now, when I block off, usually for me, it's a Tuesday, it's nice to know, hey, today I've got an open slate to just work on a project and I don't have any meetings. Occasionally, I might throw in something that I know is just a quick and easy thing, but I don't have like that standard, oh, our sales meeting is on Tuesday. Like I make sure Tuesdays are open for that backstage work and it gives me time to work on projects that I need to focus on without interruption. So this one I, I, I like for productivity because you can stay focused, um, but it's also kind of to maintain your sanity. Some days you just like, I can't do another meeting. I need time to actually slow down and look at what's going on and focus on a task. Put on music, then you really can focus, even go a step further if you want to, especially if you're working from home, and throw on your headphones, no worries of canceling headphones, and really get into the work. Those are some of my favorite days at work where I'm just like, got my head in something, no distractions, listening to music, and you feel like you really got stuff done that day. Do you have like a playlist that you go to for like deep work? Um, Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Productivity habit number four, check your email only once or twice a day. Um, the idea here is you just don't wanna be constantly looking at your email. I'm not super awesome at this, but I try to do it. Come in in the morning and I have an hour blocked off every morning to go through email. And the way that I am supposed to be doing it is just go through and clean it out first. Put things in the right folder. Hey, these are the things I need to follow up on. These are the people I need to reply to or just delete junk and go through it all and then go back into those folders and rep make replies. So mark the top three of that day that I wanna reply or get done. Should take you about an hour total to like, you know, clean it out, organize it, and then do some of those maybe top three, four, five tasks. And then don't have that 
pop up, turn it off in Outlook or whatever email app you use so that you're not getting alerted. You're working on something major and then you get this little pop up screen in the corner that says like, urgent, I need this right now, and now you, you, you've been distracted. Another tip that some people use, I don't do it because I think you know people can wait a few hours for me to respond to email, um, but some people put an auto reply on their email saying, hey, I check it from eight to nine, and then you know four to five, I'll get back to you uh, in the, during those time periods. I don't find that necessary. I mean, if I were gonna block it off for a whole day, maybe that is a good idea to say, hey, I'm not answering emails today. I also did another video on how to use signature templates um, so you can quickly respond to some emails that you constantly are sending emails about past you invoices or something like that, or if I need someone to do a task that we do all the time. My fifth habit is delegate. I think everybody struggles with this one. I don't know why once you do it, it feels so good to just not have to do that thing anymore and someone else is doing it. Um, especially if they're rock stars, which my team is full of rock stars, so I'm very lucky. I just uh, was in a leadership class and they said, don't do for others what they can do for themselves. And I thought, man, light bulb moment. Why am I doing, trying to do everything and be everything to everybody? They want to learn, they want me, they love to have that autonomy. So when someone comes to you and asks you for help, instead of doing it for them, show them. Um, you know, always help and follow up, make sure they're, uh, understood your instructions, but find that opportunity to teach them how to do it and so that you're not the only one that can do it and they don't have to keep coming to you every time they need help. Also, I like to go through my to-do list and my planner occasionally and just see, hey, what on this list can I delegate? Who could do this instead of me doing it every time? And that's just been amazing. And it just, it's growth for your team. It's, it helps you free up your schedule to do other things that you need to focus on. If you guys have any great tips to share, put them down below. I'd love to hear what you're doing to be more productive at work. I really get juiced up about this topic. So anything you have, please share it below. Don't hold back. And also please like and subscribe as always. And we'll see you in the next video.